in the spiritual life more than anywhere else the proper order and sequence must be observed from the start guests at a dinner may not like the introductory dishes and may feel more attracted by what comes later but they are forced to comply with the order of the courses likewise Jacob despised Leah's ugly eyes and was more attracted by Rachel's beauty. But first he had to serve seven years, seven years to gain Leah. Genesis chapter 29, verses 15 through 28. To become a true monk, a man should not work backwards from the end to the beginning, but start at the beginning and so advance towards perfection. In this way, he will himself gain what he seeks and will also be able to guide his disciples to holiness. Most people, however, without exerting any effort or making any real progress, small or great, in the practice of virtue, simply chase after the status of spiritual director not realizing how dangerous this is. When others urge them to undertake the work of teaching, they do not refuse. Indeed, they even wander about the back streets, recruiting anyone they find, and they promise all kinds of, pre of perquisites, as if making a contract with servants about food and clothing. Spiritual directors of this kind like to appear in public, supported by a large crowd of attendants, and to have all the outward pomp of an abbot, as if playing a part on the stage. So as to not lose the services of their disciples, they are forced to keep on gratifying their whims. They are like a charioteer who drops the reins and lets his horses go where they like. Their disciples are allowed to run wild, carried away by their desires. They fall over precipices or stumble at every obstacle in their path. Because there is no one to stop them or to restrain their disordered impulses. Such teachers should note how Ezekiel condemns those who indulge the pleasures of others. In giving way to everyone's wishes, they are treasuring up future punishment for themselves. Woe to the women who sew patches on every elbow, says Ezekiel, and put veils on the heads of people of every age, so as to slay souls for a handful of barley and a piece of bread. Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 8 through 18 through 19. These false teachers are acting similarly, for they supply their bodily needs from the contributions of their disciples, and wear clothes sewn together, as it were, from rags. By making others put veils on their heads, they bring shame upon them, for men ought to pray or prophesy with their heads uncovered. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. They render them effeminate and destroy souls, that ought not to die. Instead of doing this, they ought to obey the true teacher Christ and to refuse, as far as possible, to assume the direction of others. For he says to his disciples, Do not be called rabbi. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8. And if he admonished Peter and John and the rest of the apostles to avoid such work, and to consider themselves unworthy of such a position, how can anyone imagine himself superior to them and claim for himself the office from which they were debarred? For in saying, do not be called rabbi, he does not mean that we are free to assume the office so long as we avoid the title. But what if someone, not from any choice of his own, is obliged to accept one or two disciples, and so to become the spiritual director of others as well. 
first let him examine himself carefully to see whether he can teach them through his actions rather than his words, setting his own life before them as a model of holiness. He must take care that through copying him they do not obscure the beauty of holiness with the ugliness of sin. He should also realize that he ought to work as hard for his disciples' salvation as he does for his own. For having once accepted responsibility for them, he will be accountable to God for them as well for himself. That is why the saints tried to leave behind them disciples whose holiness was no less than their own and to change these disciples from their original condition to a better state. Thus Paul the Apostle changed Onesimus from a runaway slave into a martyr. Philemon chapter verses 10 through 19. Elijah turned Elisha from a plowman into a prophet. Into a prophet. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 19. Moses transmitted special gifts to Joshua, though he was younger than all the rest. Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 7 through 8. And Eli made Samuel greater than himself. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 19 through 20. In each of these cases, the disciple was helped by his own efforts, but the chief cause of his progress was the fact that he had found a teacher capable of fanning the smoldering spark of his zeal and of kindling it into flame. So these teachers became God's spokesmen, communicating his will to others. For God says, If you bring forth the precious from the vial, you shall be as my mouth. Jeremiah chapter 15 